What's going on guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to the first ever Q&A that I'm doing on my official channel. It's been a big week, I hit 10k on my Twitter for the first time ever, so again, thank you guys. If you don't already follow me on Twitter, don't forget to check out Carefree Lewis G down in the description below. But yeah, it's the first ever Q&A that I'm doing on my official channel. I put a tweet out a couple days ago, you guys just filled it with questions. And let's get straight into it, let's check out the questions. The first question given to me. First question from Tom Bromley 64 on Twitter says, what would you deem to be a successful season for Lampard this season? I think it's going to have to be the same thing as last season. Top four in a trophy and I'm going to be happy. There's a lot of question marks over this team. Eden Hazard's left us and he was carrying us for a lot of last season. We're back to square one with a new manager after Maurizio Sarri being sacked. We've got a transfer ban, so we haven't really been, been able to do a lot of improvements on our squad. There's questions over Lampard's experience. There's question marks over a lot of players in the team. It's going to be a very difficult season, but you just got to roll with the punches this season. Lampard's going to have the support of the majority of Chelsea fan base, if not all of them. I think we just need to take it a game at a time, the same way we always have done. If we get top four, if we manage to qualify for the Champions League, if we get a trophy on top of that, Lampard's done brilliant this season because there's a lot of fans who are thinking we might not even make it into the top six. Now, I think it's going to be tough. There's a possibility we might, we might not even make top six. It's very slim, but it could happen. We gotta be honest, it could happen. I don't think it could happen. The optimist in me is saying we can still get top four. But it's gonna be hard. I will say that we've put ourselves in that situation over years and years of poor transfer windows and failing to back our ex-managers and everything like that. But we're here now. We just need to try and be optimistic about it and just trust Frank Lampard and just trust the process. Next question from Natnell Yu says, I, do you ever, I think he said, have you ever been to Ethiopia? Yeah, I've been to Ethiopia once. I went in 2012. I went to Addis Ababa and Nazareth. It was really nice. It was a rainy season, but the summer was basically the same as it was in England. I don't really know what, to, what much to say of it. I barely remember any of it, but it was a great holiday. I remember meeting my granddad for the first time before he passed away. That meant a lot to me. Seeing my home country for the first time ever, that meant a lot to me. I mean, I even remember watching the Community Shield, Chelsea versus Man City, and there was, and it was like five pounds to enter. Well, currency, five pounds to enter. And it was just a bunch of plastic chairs and a big plasma screen TV, and it was being used like a cinema. It was brilliant, and I loved it. But yeah, it's the only time I've ever been to Ethiopia. Uh, Carlo P45 says, how many Chelsea games have you been to? I, like, I don't even know off the top of my head. I know in the last two seasons I've been to about 110 games and that's mad by itself. Overall though, it probably wouldn't be as much because I didn't really properly start going to games until I got my first job and that was Conte's first season. Before that, I was still going to Chelsea games, so it was just whenever you can afford it. And I was probably going to like eight games a season before 15, 16 and then because our form was so bad that season, no one wanted to go to the game, so it was just easier for me to get tickets. And then ever since then, I just started going to more games. I got my first job. That meant I could start doing away games as well. Got to uni and you then you use student loan for exactly what you use it for. And yeah, it's just been loving the last couple of years. The second question actually links into this. He said, at Dirty Barista says, that's a hell of a name as well. He says, which season in particular was your favourite as a Chelsea fan watching most of their games live? Conte's first. Conte's first season was glorious. I remember my first away day outside of London because my dad didn't really want me going outside of London by myself until I turned 18. First away day was City away when we won 3-1 and I swear on my life I had an out of body experience when William scored that second goal. That away game was mental. It's still a top five for me. But yeah, it has to be Conte's first season. Next question from Ben Fost 63176391, hell of a lot of numbers. He says, favourite Morata moment, that's going to be hard, you're damn right that's going to be hard. Um, There's not really a lot of good moments, so my, maybe the hat-trick at Stoke. No, Atletico away when he got the equaliser. That one, because that was my first ever European away as well. And I remember there was a little story behind it, because I had... I just moved into my uni the week before and we had Freshers Week and after Freshers Week comes the Freshers Flu and if you're not used to Freshers Flu it hits you like a bitch. So my throat is just so dry and the whole second half I'm just pacing up and down my row begging everyone for water because they, they close the concourse, Spanish 
of course they always do that, they're just dicks to English crowd. Yeah, they've closed the concourse, and I'm just there struggling to breathe, I can barely vlog, I can barely chant, I can barely talk. I'm just like struggling to hold my breath, and then Morata goes and gets the equaliser, and suddenly I'm just screaming like nothing's happened. That, another top five away day, but that's my favourite Morata moment. Can you unblock everyone on Blues TV? We're working on that. I didn't really deep how many people actually got blocked, but yeah, we're working on that. Don't worry, we'll get that all sorted out. Another, can you unblock? Oh my, how many people got blocked? Okay, we're working on it. We'll get that sorted. And next question, Ronan TJ Wright says, what's your ideal starting 11 with our current squad? That's a good question, because there's still a couple of question marks here. Easy starting goal, Kepa starts. Right back, you probably go for Azpilicueta, I'm thinking. Uh, centre back, we'll, we'll say that they're all fit, because it's going to make it a lot more easier. Um, centre backs will go Rudiger as the start, and Zuma? Yeah, let's go Rudiger and Zuma. And at left back, it's got to be Emerson. I mean, we still need a, a new left back regardless, but... I think Emerson starts by default because Alonso has a lot of making up to do for last season. Um, the two in DM will go for a 4 2 3 1. I'll go for Jorginho and Kante. Now, everyone's going to say Kante is back in his original position when he really isn't. He's, he can play in DM. Never going to say that he can't because that's a stupid statement to make in general. But saying that it's his natural position when he's only really played there for France doesn't make sense. But I'm going off on a run now on nothing. Kante and Jorginho in DM. In Cam. There's plenty of choices right now. Ross Barkley and Mason Mount are really impressing. But if they're all fit, I'd say Loftus-Cheek has to do it. Hell, to be honest, Loftus-Cheek could probably play in DM as well and be the guy who drives the ball forward because he's succeeding both of them. But I don't see any reason why Ruben Loftus-Cheek shouldn't start unless Mason Mount and Ross Barkley just pull a madness over the next couple of months. In the wings, it's going to have to be Pulisic and hudson Adoy. Willian is Willian. Pedro is in decline, so... I probably, I pro, they'd be good coming off the bench. I'd say it as that, but for now, start with Hudson Odoi and Pulisic. And up front, there's question marks of all three of them, but I'd probably go for Giroud because of his experience and his link up play. He's not really that impressive if he if he isn't shooting first time. None of his goals last season weren't first time finishes, but he's still a quality striker. He can still get you goals when it matters, and he's got the experience. So I'd probably go for Olivier Giroud. Alright, K.010 says, when did you start supporting Chelsea? Was it after 2003 or before? Little history joke there, but alright. Yeah, I um, started supporting Chelsea, I think my first season, watch I started watching football after the 2006 World Cup. And then everyone in my school was just getting into football and everything. And my school was like 10 minutes away from Chelsea. So most of my mates were Chelsea fans. And I was like to my dad, and I was like to my dad, because my dad loves watching football. He's like, I was like, what's my, what's our two local clubs? And he said, Chelsea and Fulham. Now I knew barely anything about club football at this point. I only picked Chelsea because they were blue. I liked the Thunderbirds at that point. Thunderbird one was my favorite. He, that was blue. I had a weird Thomas the Tank obsession as a kid, as a child. Thomas was blue. Chelsea was blue too. It just worked for me. I just preferred them to Fulham. So yeah, that's how I became a Chelsea fan. If I'd preferred the colour white, I would have been a Fulham fan. Uh, next question. Kenny, Kenny underscore CFC. I ain't heard from him in ages. What are you saying, Kenny? He says, players who you think should leave the club permanently or do you think loan to gain more experience? <sighs> Players who I think should leave the club permanently. Bakayoko for one, because I don't think he's improved in pre-season. And I don't even want to be disrespectful, but he's the worst player I've ever seen put on a Chelsea shirt. The performances I saw in Conte's last season, week in and week out, topped off by Watford away when he got sent off in half an hour and the away fans were just chanting your fucking shit at him as he walked off the pitch. He didn't deserve it, but it's still a huge statement to make. But yeah... Bakayoko hasn't really improved for me in my opinion. He had a good loan spell at, at, at AC Milan on loan, but I think Serie A is just a league that suits him best. I'd rather just send him back off there. Who else do I want to get rid of? Danny Drinkwater. The fact that he's on 100, 100k a week, he is stealing a living at this club. But yeah, if I had to pick two, Bakayoko and Drinkwater, just clear that wage bracket. A CFC hash. Hashim, my guy. He says, do you think majority of fans will turn on Lampard if we go on a losing sp losing spree? Or will majority stick together? 
trust me, people aren't turning on Lampard, especially in their first season. Like I've we've heard fans on Twitter saying I'd rather be relegated with Lampard than succeed with Sari. I remember in 2015 when Lampard came back with Man City and it was after he scored against us in the away game and he was getting a couple of boos from Chelsea fans. It weren't the majority, it was like a real minority but you could still hear it. There were fights going on around the ground because of it. I promise you Frank Lampard is our highest ever goal scorer. He's one of the biggest legends in this club history. They're not turning on Frank Lampard. Simple. Simple. Right, last question and this is a question I got a good couple of times. Main reason you've left 100% Chelsea, first thing I want to say is working there was the best two and a half years of my life and I loved every minute of it. I did it because I liked it, I didn't do it for any other reason if people were trying to talk about money or bullshit like that. I did it because I liked it. I started vlogging because I enjoyed the idea of vlogging and I just loved the idea of doing it myself. I do it every week because I love doing it. I'm just going to say I thought it was the best decision for me to walk away from the channel. I'm not going to go into a lot of depth into it because there's a lot of people who I really respect. I'm not going to say things that other people would think would be disrespectful. But all I'm going to say is I left because I thought it was the best decision for me in the long term. I spoke to Louis and I would say that I left in an amicable way. It was just the best decision for me. I really will just leave at that. I'm thankful to Louis for the last two and a half years. I'm thankful to Louis for everything because I wouldn't be in the position that I am right now without him. So I have total 100% respect for him. But I, I left because it was the best decision for me. So yeah, that's all I'm really going to give you guys. That is the main reason why I left 100% Chelsea. I wish them all the best in their, in their future. I wish Louis all the best with Imperial Wharf and everything. Don't forget to check out Imperial Wharf's new YouTube channel as well. They've only just released that and I think by the time this video comes out, their video against DTFC will be out as well. You guys will want to check that, that one out. But yeah. This is my first ever Q&A on my official channel. Let me know whether you guys liked it. Let me know whether you guys enjoyed the idea of it. Let me know if you guys want, to, want me to do this again. If you guys have any other ideas of content that you guys want me to, don't forget to leave it down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my Twitter as well. It's the same as the at on YouTube. Don't forget to check out my Instagram as well, Lewis underscore Gebra Selassie. And I will see you guys in... About a week for Manchester United. The season's nearly about to start. Let's go.